So the okay. insecurity that triggered it all, are you familiar with what a buffalo hump is? No, girl, educate us. <laughs> girl, thank you, babe. Uh, it was it bigger out. in my head than anywhere else, but it was still something that consumed my day-to-day -day life in the sense of any of the shirts or tops that I had wouldn't come up high enough on my neck to cover it. And I always had long hair all my life just to hide it. And actually the moment I had it liposuctioned off and I was like, oh my God, it's flat. I went and got me one of those asymmetric Khloe Kardashian bobs. And I was like, yeah, go ahead. Look at, look at this neck. I was literally just in, in this mental prison because of that insecurity. It wouldn't let me be great. And I knew, I always knew since I was a child, I had greatness within me. But I felt like things like the buffalo hump, it was also my chin, it was my midsection, it was several things that it, it was just preventing me from really being able to like bloom and, mm -hmm. and become, become Diana. From plastic surgery recipient to plastic surgery influencer and seeing the gaps in the industry and creating a Faha empire, Today, my guest found gaps in the industry that could help thousands of women, and she has done just that. Today, I have the amazing Faha doctor, yeah. Diana Wright. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Hello, beautiful. Hey there. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much you. for taking the moment. I know you're busy. <laughs> Likewise. Likewise, yeah. <laughs> it's hard for us to find, find some time in our schedules, but we did it. We it did it. <laughs> so take me back to when you woke up and was like, I want to have surgery. Because Ooh. here we talk about the real, like from beginning to end. We, I don't talk to surgeons, though. I love them, as you know. I talk to patients, patients over profits. So we want the real story. So I, I love that think, philosophy, by the way, because to me, it's always, not, it's not just patients. It should be humans over yes. anything, really. But anyway... <laughs> Man, I, I can't, I don't know if I can pinpoint the exact morning, but I can definitely tell you the part, or I would say, I'm just going to call a spade a spade, the insecurity that I had that triggered me going down a path that kind of got out of control, honey, because I just, I just wanted some lipo and now I have my own Faha line, like, you know, it's crazy. Things escalated. Thank you, God. Everything was Yes. Nice. Yes. So, um... Girl, I don't went down entire pipe. Let me see. Where was I? Mm -hmm. So it was the insecurity. Was it like yes? Had so it been... Yes. So the okay. insecurity that triggered it all. Are you familiar with what a buffalo hump is? No, girl. Educate us. <laughs> girl, thank you, babe. Uh, anyway, it's just I... <laughs> it's terrible. It's terrible. It's terrible. Essentially, what it is is on the back of your neck right here at the top. Like if you touch it, you'll feel your spine there. Right. Um, poking out maybe just like a little bit. But I had like a genetic fatty deposit right on top of it. Nothing too crazy, but in my mind, it was huge. Like In your mind, my, you look like Quasimodo. <laughs> yeah. Say that because it triggers me, honey. That name triggers me. I I'm have been sorry. called Quaz before, okay? Oh, Quaz. I'm sorry. Anyway. I'm sorry. <laughs> but that's what I visualized. <laughs> No, you were actually 100% on the money, except that mine was not as extreme. It was, and, and really, like my husband, like Dre was saying, um, that he didn't even notice it like majority of the time until, you know, I started calling it out. So totally it was bigger it in my head than anywhere else, but it was still something that consumed my day-to-day -day life in the sense of any of the shirts or tops that I had wouldn't come up high enough on my neck to cover it. And I always had long hair all my life just to hide it. And actually the moment I had it liposuctioned off and I was like, oh my God, it's flat. I went and got me one of those asymmetric Khloe Kardashian bobs. And I was like, yeah, go ahead. Look at, look at this neck. So anyways. Yes. And you, <laughs> you have such a like, face for that hair. I can just imagine you looked so good with that hair. Like girl, I can see it on you right now. One. Yes, you look amazing. It was You're beautiful. On I You're appreciate beautiful. it. So are you. Thank you. Thank you. I love that we got the blonde going on. I did that for you, girl. I was like, oh, what am I going to wear that. today? I'm going to see Diana. Yeah. I'm going to be blonde. Yeah. I am a sucker for blonde. A sucker. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not natural, though. You can see my natural color. Well, right girl, there. you know this ain't <laughs> natural neither. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. So, anyways, 
the buffalo hump is what launched everything and then i was like you know what if i'm gonna like do research into this let me see what else i can do what other things are bothering me so what i ended up doing um is making like a, a priority list of insecurities if you will and i've prioritized based on the things that bother me the most and consume my thoughts oh another thing to go back to the consuming my thoughts it would be random things like i'm washing dishes in the sink and i know my husband is sitting right there and if he looks at me and he sees me from the side he could probably see the hump so it would be like that was like and i i was literally just in in this mental prison because of that insecurity it wouldn't let me be great and i knew i always knew since i was a child i had greatness within me but i felt like things like the buffalo hump it was also my chin it was my midsection it was several things that it, it was just preventing me from really being able to like bloom and mm -hmm. and become become diana right yeah so yeah Don't i lie. love that you're so honest about that because i feel like we all have different versions of ourselves and like when we look at tv and celebrities or musicians things like that we see them which is the only examples that we get. We could also say that they are motivational speakers or business people or whatever. When you get to a certain level of money, you can address those insecurities as those higher levels. But average folks don't, didn't know that. I know I didn't know that. I didn't realize that until I started my first business and made seven figures. And I was like, oh, I can afford this now. Right. What can I do? Oh, I've always wanted a flat stomach. I've right. always, you know, so I just think that when people are like, oh, you should be your greatest self without that. Mm -mm. I love when you're honest and saying like, yeah. I know I'm great. However, I have to feel that not my husband, my best friend, what, what I see in the mirror has to make me feel great so I can even elevate, you know? Totally. I agree with that. Yeah. So, okay, so you, so how did you find your surgeon? How did you pick your surgeon? I know who your surgeon is out of Chicago, yes. Dr. Z. Yes. How did you find him? So I was, I just went and started researching. I'm a research machine. I have to know as much as possible before I make a big decision like that. Um, so I was researching and I found like some of the best, most highly rated plastic surgeons in the Chicago metro area, which is where I lived at the time. And um, I just picked three of those that I, you know, I looked at their work and I saw, okay, they definitely have BBL experience. Not sorry, not BBL. Uh, at that time it was chin lipo. The BBL ended up kind of happening, by the way. That was so unplanned. <laughs> I love it. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I was looking at their pictures and their work to make sure I'm not wasting their time. I'm not wasting my time. So I got some consultation. I didn't really feel anything on the inside and I'm such a noob, right? I don't know what I'm asking. Like this is kind of like intimidating in a way. And also kind of like you're standing there naked with all your insecurities out there. Like it's, it's, it's a that, that appointment right there, that consultation, girl, that yeah. consultation appointment is different. Cause you're going to sit yeah. there and look at all of it and somebody else is looking at it too and you don't know what they're thinking but obviously it's a surgeon so this is what they do for work they're probably right. not judging you in any kind of way but like it's very it's very like it strips you of like your your pride or your, your ego whatever whatever you want to call it it's a humbling yeah. appointment but anyways i got three of them and i was like dang nobody really like i didn't really feel a connection and i'm big on listening to my intuition and that, that inner voice of of you know you're, you're you're the holy spirit basically yeah so i'm like okay um i'm not feeling it but then I, I kept researching one of them and then i was like you know what i'm just gonna do this i'm gonna book with him but the whole time i had such a weird feeling about it and it wouldn't go away for nothing it was it was not going away and then i prayed and i was like just like reveal to me what i'm supposed to do like make yeah. it very obvious that I know when, whenever I need to make that decision, I know what to do. And all of a sudden, I'm, a, I'm a, I was in some surgery Facebook groups. I keep seeing Dr. Azizi's name pop up. I'm like, okay, I keep seeing this. I have oh, and this is a surgery group for the entire world. Wow. So that's why I was like, okay, this is the interesting part that Dr. Azizi in Chicago, where I currently live, 
keeps popping up in this global surgery group. I think it's like 50, 60,000 subscribers, uh, whatever, to that group. Um, what do you call them? I don't know. Members. They're like Facebook groups or whatever, like members. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. I think it's members, but whatever. Um, and then I started looking into him and one thing led to another. I got a consult. It was an immediate connection. I was like, oh my God, he's amazing. He's knowledgeable. He's personable. He did not make me feel rushed at all which some yeah. of the other ones that I con consulted with, they made me feel rushed. They made me feel like they were like judging me. One of them didn't even want to show up. I was like, are you kidding me? Like, this ain't, this ain't me aesthetics. You should yeah. be here. <laughs> like, where you at? Yeah. <laughs> so oh my God. That was, that was like red flag. Hello. Yeah. But uh, anyways, I knew and, and I went, I ended up going with him. I think that that you, so first of all, you speak my love language when you say like, I prayed about it, the Holy Spirit girl, we hear. Yeah. Right okay, I, remember, I mean, I prayed about my surgeon as well. Like I even prayed like, Lord, if this is not your will for me to have surgery, close the door financially, close the door in every way. And then when it was just like, open door, open door, open door. Yeah. In the middle, I was like, okay, Lord, you really want yeah. me to have this surgery? Yes, yes, I'm supposed to have a surgery. You care. Oh, you care about my feelings, you know? Like, that's why I love God so much. That could be a whole yes. episode. But, like, in that feeling that you feel when you meet your surgeon, like, that's so extremely, extremely important. Um, and I... I just know I've seen you talk about him all the time and speak very highly of him. And I can also tell your personality. You're not going to say that about somebody that you don't no. really feel it. You're very. I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't. You don't sugarcoat out. nothing for nobody. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Got to earn this. Okay. Yes, I do. You got to earn this. Okay. Yes, I love that. <laughs> so you also, one thing I want to talk a little bit about is how you paid for your surgery. Ooh, because. Girl. You were, I, I, I was like, this girl, she did what she had to do. Okay. So, and also I want to share this with the listeners because sometimes people have excuses like I can't afford it, or even they can't afford the surgeon that they really want. Right. So they start bargain shopping, putting themselves at risk mm -hmm. for that. And so I'd love for you to talk about how you made it happen to go to an incredible, amazing surgeon without yeah. breaking your, your, your family bank, you know? Yes. And, and at that time, Dr. Azizi was at least double the price of like Amia aesthetics. And, mm. and by now it's, it's even more. As he should be. <laughs> they throwing out BBL specials for $2,795. Like, ooh, <laughs> no. Cringe. Yes. <laughs> Oh, that sounds so scary. Like, please, if you're listening, don't do that. Please think about it. Take your time, save up, or do what I'm about to tell you I did. So, yeah. um, my husband, my wonderful husband, Dre, was very much against, at the time, surgery. He didn't really understand the depths and the reasons behind why women want to get surgery. He thought it was vanity. And he has, in the recent years, being in, he's in business with me. He's my partner. Being in business with me and like really opening his mind up and he, he even talks to my customers and, and he's so good at it. They might think it's me, although he puts his name there, but <laughs> he, oh my God, since when do you use all of these emojis? But okay, anyway, so he's really trying and he's understood now that this is not at all about vanity. Right. Sure, we want to be beautiful. We want to feel beautiful. We want our partner to desire us and all those things looking good always, excuse me, always helps with that. But it's deeper. It's so much deeper than that. So yeah. now that I understood that, um, we don't have those problems anymore. But back then, it was it was an issue. And he told me at the time I was working for J.P. Morgan, I had a, I had a great pay for somebody my age. How old was I at the time? 20, 20, like 30, 31. And, um, you know, but he still he was like, Diana, you're not going to touch your check. And uh you're not going to get any kind of loans. You're not, I, if you're going to do this, he was trying to make it as hard for me as possible. Girl. Yeah, it sounds so like I, it. He had all of the, all of the caveats and requirements. It was, it was hard, but a girl oh did it. Gosh. I found the loopholes right. and did the work. But anyways, I was like, okay, cool. I guess. So around that time I had already started to kind of dibble dabble in just like restoring old furniture just as a hobby. Cause he was telling me, Diana, you need a hobby. So I went and got myself a hobby, you know, something that I'm interested in. Cause I like making things beautiful. 
there's a trend there, by yes. the way, throughout my whole life that pinpoints to that very point. But anyways, um, I was like, okay, well, let me see if I can make money doing that. So I went on Pinterest and at the time, farmhouse decor was the hotness. And it's I the beginning of that. the pandemic. So everybody's at their house. Everybody's looking at their walls like, ugh, let me do yes. something new. So I decided to strike right then and there and figure out how to teach myself woodworking. And I started to make these DIY shutters. Oh my God. Dang it. I wish I could show you. Um, these DIY window shutters, they were so easy to make, girl. It was very fun and it was therapeutic for me, by the way, because, you know, I had something where I could just turn my brain off for once. But yeah. I just started making them and like, for, for that example, the shutters, that was like my best seller. I made so many of them. And the shutters allowed me to learn how to use a saw, how to use all the different tools that allowed me to graduate to literally building my own farmhouse style furniture from scratch. Like I made really nice, I copied restoration hardware tables. I made them <laughs> and people bought them. They came to our house through Facebook marketplace and bought the furniture. And then I was custom making stuff, any color you want. I got really good at it. But the shutters, girl, $6 worth of wood at Home Depot. And I turned around and sold them for 60 and it took me 10 minutes to make. Wow. And I'm going to find, where do I want. find these shutters so I can put them as a B-roll on the episode? Because I want to show these. Are they on your okay. page or can you send me a couple of them? I'm going to text you pictures, text. Okay, yes, please. Laura. I'm going to B-roll during that part I got of you. the pictures. Yeah, because I, I'm a, I'm a I've i seen them. I've seen them on a post that you did. I was yes. Like, <laughs> and and I, was having, girl, I was having so much fun with that too because I was like, ooh, I can make this one, like I would stain the wood in like a dark gray color and then I would paint white over it. And then I like sanded it down and then made it distress. Like it was so much fun. Oh, and then that evolved into me going to people's houses and making accent walls. Like I was making board and batten walls. I can do that now, but you know, I'm gonna pay somebody now because I don't have yeah. time. So there's a few walls in my house where I'm like, oh, like my fingers are itching a little bit. I just don't have the time. Um, also, I don't want to do the dust girl is not very glamorous. So I ain't trying. But girl, you are just amazing. This thing got a saw and some wood and made your surgery happen that way. I, I remember did. when I was when I was like, I was like, y'all need to be creative. And but in my mind, I was like, but not everybody going to get some wood and a saw. <gasps> I know my no tail ain't getting no wood and no saw, girl. I know. I know, girl. <laughs> Dre, like I'll, I'll be in the basement at 3 a.m. and he's making fun of me. He was like, Diana, I'm sleeping. And in my dreams, I'm hearing, Meow. and that's like me in the basement. <laughs> but girl, I was determined. So not only, oh, and another thing, another of the caveats from my wonderful husband, I had to pay off my student loans too, girl. So I had so many things that were speaking against me financially, pulling the trigger on, I think it was a $12,000 surgery at the time. Wow. Girl. So he was yeah. trying to get you to give up, but he no, don't know. I, was like, I need to be freed from this prison. I need yes. to be freed from the prison. So um, I did what I had to do. I paid off my student loans. The day before Kobe Bryant, unfortunately passed away. I won't forget. Cause that was, Aww. that was like losing a family member. Although yes. I have not met him. I actually, I've seen him in person. I haven't met him though. Um, what else? Yes, the student loans. Yeah, just a lot of things. Not being not yeah. being allowed to touch my my only income check, like the only <laughs> money that I'm getting. Like, dang, you just like ruled out every possible way for me to be able to pay for the surgery. But it's, it was meant to be. Yeah. And also taught him 